two kids from Queens, cut from a different cloth. Now, joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force, but more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. What's poppin', what's poppin', what's poppin'? Welcome to Nikki and Moose. I'm Nikki. That's Moose. What's up, Moose? What's the good word? What and is the good word? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Look, real quick, shout out to the Facebook Live people. Shout out to the YouTube people that are going to watch this later. And for all my Facebook people, if you get any kind of value from this, send some stars. We love you, okay? Um, Moose, how you feeling? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm really excited about the direction we're going to take in today, especially, you know, that we're doing some good stuff with this, man. I feel like the lessons that have been coming out have been really good uh, as, we, as we look at some of the different people. Yep, yep. So, uh, for those who don't know, we're going to go over no other than LeBron James. So, if you are a LeBron James fan... Put some basketballs in the comments and everything like that. Or if you just like what he does, just put some basketballs in the comments with the emojis and all that great stuff. Um, but let's get into this intro. To be in this position now, the excitement that I have to be a Laker, I'm happy to be a part of it because I believe the Lakers um, is a historical franchise. We all know that, but it's a championship uh, franchise, and that's what we're trying to get back to. This is where it is today, man. The King, LeBron James, in his Laker debut. The one and only LeBron James. Moose, give the stats. Hey. <clears throat> Unbelievable, man, to believe to think that this guy is is in the league at 35, been in the league for forever, it seems, at 17 years now, uh, and still doing what he does. But let's jump right into it. Of course, athlete, entrepreneur, philanthropist, uh, three-time NBA champion, four-time NBA MVP, coming in with a net worth of $450 million. Mm. Man, 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 man. But let's get straight into these lessons. Um, I don't want to waste no time because there's so much to go over with LeBron. And the way we're going to go about it today is not going to focus so much on the basketball career. But if you know us, you know we're going to go more over the brand and business side. But I did want to talk about some of the mindset that he has while playing. So... To set this scene up, really, um, he started in Cleveland, right? Um, and now he's in L.A. There's two different mindsets when he was the man in Cleveland before, he, you know, the Miami and all that great stuff. But very beginning, first seven years, man in Cleveland to what he is now as far as his mindset when it comes to the Lakers. I'm not going to guarantee no championship. I tell you that. I'm just going to. I'm, I'm going to guarantee that we get better every day, and uh, that's the thing that you guys don't see. That comes from practice. Sometimes you have practice, but sometimes you're not. I just know that we're going to get better every day, and we're going to be a we're going to be a lot better team than last last year. I can guarantee that. I wasn't able to come through, you know, in, in my seven years in Cleveland. How confident are you that sometime in these four years you will be in the finals again? You could win another championship. That's the goal. That's not my question. Well, I mean, listen, <laughs> I, I plan and uh, I train and I set my mind every single day to play for championships. Um, my only goal um, being here is to get the Lakers back um, to playing championship basketball. So I wanted to share that because I think mindset and speaking things into existence definitely played a role with 
how things turn out, just period. Not necessarily just with LeBron, just I think period, right? So what we saw with that is when he was in Cleveland, he was like, yo, I'm just trying to get better every day. Not, not trying, I'm not saying that I'm going to win a championship. So he already predetermined what was going to happen, right? And for those who don't know, like he was in Cleveland, then he went to Miami, won the chip there, went back to Cleveland, won the chip there. Now he's in LA, right? And one of the coolest things when going to LA, he he actually likes a challenge. So he if you look at his history, he he stayed within Cleveland even though he could have left probably way before that he did was because he was trying to do what others didn't. And when it comes to LA now, he's like, yo, this is, I don't want this franchise to die. And I think now with the passing of Kobe, I feel like he has maybe a little bit more to him, a little bit heavier on his shoulders to make sure that the franchise is successful and back in championship waves like he's ending up going right now. Moose, what, what did you think about the clip? Yeah, I think it's cool to see him mature. Like, you know, one of the things you got to take into consideration, right? Of course, yeah, we're going to talk about the the accolades and the success, but a lot of people who have been in LeBron's shoes have made big time mistakes, mm -hmm. like big time mistakes that have messed them up in the press, in the media, with their endorsement deals. So for someone to be at the highest of the highs in their specific field, right? Having media, social media, everything, mm -hmm. and still keep a clean slate with his family and his personal and professional life, maintain good character. The only thing that people had on him early in his career, and he addressed it was, yo, I, I wasn't producing, like I, I didn't come up short. So I do like the humility that he came in with, as opposed to some of the almost overly confident arrogance that some of the other big time players portrayed and ended up making some making some mistakes that they recovered from for the most part but i love that lebron has been one person that has kept a clean slate all throughout but i do want to say this before we move on because i know usually you're like wait why didn't you remind me oh i was gonna do it but i was gonna let you finish oh. but <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 so i was, I was like well I'm finishing up. Let me just throw. Well, in no, that I had a question. I had a question. Okay, my bad. Go, go. You so, go so how important it is to you, Moose, as far as the whole speaking things into existence? Like, um, as we saw in the clip, he said one thing, and that was the result, right? Um, how big are you about you know saying stuff that can predetermine certain? you know, outcomes and results compared to maybe even just staying shut and letting the action speak for itself. What, which way do you go about it? Yeah. So I've, I've come to learn that uh, while humility is great, usually the people who are naturally humble are the ones who need to do a little bit more dreaming. Right. So if you're someone who practices humility and you walk in like, man, you know, no, and you're downplaying everything, mm -hmm. you're someone who needs to push yourself to uh, really be a little bit more outspoken about the things that you want to do because you're probably short sighting yourself. So what I've come to realize is that most people who walk with that type of style, they're often dreaming from where they are. They're not taking into consideration the growth that's naturally going to take place as they put themselves in different positions, as they practice and work on their craft over time. So I think LeBron was more so dreaming from where he was. He was like, man, well, let me just kind of play it safe. You know, Cleveland has been getting squashed ever since uh, Jordan was in the league. So yeah. we're just going to practice hard every day. And if we can turn a winning record, we're good to go. Then he goes in and has a lot more success than he anticipates. And is like, oh, hold up. Um, yeah, I think I think we need to we need to change that up. It's time to go for for some rings. So I, I would say, yeah, I, I definitely understand like the concept of being humble and maintaining humility. But it's those people that need to really think about, man, my growth over time is going to put me in a position that I'm better and more capable than where I currently stand. How can I stretch my dream a little bit, the vision for what I have so that I can, you know, begin to attract some of those things that I want. 
So what's the healthy balance between like not too humble, but not too like you too full of yourself? Like, okay, we get it, but chill out. Yeah. Ah, man, that that's tough to that's tough to match. I, but I would say the 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 way you can walk that fine line is to have a circle of friends, just a select few. And when I say a select few, I mean less than three, right? Like not even five, less than three that you can plan and expand on some of those visions with, but it's not seen anywhere public. You're not posting coming soons and one days and I'm gonna come back and stun on my people. Like, don't do that, right? Don't be that guy who right. who is looking to be one day successful so that you can come back and make your your neighborhood friends feel bad, right? Because they they like put a put a piece of dirt in your sandwich or something. Like don't don't do that. But uh, uh I would say no, no, no. But I'm just saying, like, you, you, you hear, you hear some people talk about it, like, man, I can't wait till I do this so I can go back and, and you know. Thanks. But I would say, yeah, keep it small, uh, and, and maintain, like, maintain that humility publicly, but definitely behind the scenes, you should be working on how do you expand that vision. Boom! 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 I just wanted to get that out of you. That's all. That's all. But let's get. You said I, that I happened did. To you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if that was a personal experience, I wanted to expand on it. Like, how did it make you feel? What did you do? Oh. What was the comeback? I know we're working on comebacks now. <laughs> Luckily, no dirt, no dirt in my sandwich. We're good. Praise God. So, like Moo said, I forgot the usual, right? I tend to do that. I'm okay with that. That's why I have him in my life. But we have to figure out what LeBron James is as far as the flight assessment. Let me pull that up real quick. As you know, for all the core uh, fans and followers, we go by the flight assessment. We have four characters, pilot, flight attendant, grounds crew, air traffic control. And for those who don't know what these are and what are we even talking about, Moose, within a minute and 30, can you let the people know what this is? Absolutely. So we go off of the, the, the four dominant personality types that, we ex that exist in the world. And what we've come to see is that Every successful person, every human on the planet is going to have all four of these styles, but one of them is going to be their dominant trait. It's going to be the way that they go about doing what they do and how they are the way they are, right? For most of us who think that I, this is just me and that's just how I was created. Yes, that's true, but there is a method to the madness after all that you can begin to kind of pick up on. So it's really just a game of patterns. And when you look at what we use is the airport theme because it's a dynamic that allows you to see all four of these characters working together. So first we look at the pilot and the pilot, as you observe him in his natural habitat or her, when they go into the plane, first thing they do is they go straight to the cockpit and they're really focused on just getting the plane from where it is to its final destination. So pilot personalities are described as people who are super driven, very competitive. They love to win all the time and they love to step up to a big challenge, right? Next, if you are headed to your seat, of course, you're going to walk by a flight attendant, smiling, being friendly, maybe asking to help you with your bags or help you find your seat or ask any, you know, answer any questions that you may have. So those with fi flight attendant tendencies are usually people who are super relational. They're all about the people. They love to be the life of the party and they get their energy from being around others. Now you have your seat. If you're sitting in a window seat, you're going to look out the window. You're probably going to see somebody in either a blue or green, maybe even an orange vest. Those are your grounds crew members. Now you'll find them having a lot of different responsibilities, right? Getting bags onto the plane, uh, wheeling the, the plane itself from the gate to the, uh, what's that thing called? I don't know. It's the, uh, the, the place that they take off. I used, I forgot the word for it, but They'll take runway? the plane from the, the gate to the runway. Hey. There we go. I don't know why I forgot that. <laughs> Get the plane from the gate to the runway. They have their hands in a lot of different places. Ultimately, we look at these people as ones who are very adaptable, very flexible. They can kind of make a lot of different things work, and they just want everyone to get along after all. And then lastly, air traffic control. You don't hear from them or you don't see them, but you hear of them, right? They're in the background making sure that no two planes are taken off from the same runway. Uh, they want to make sure everything is staying on time and keeping people informed about the rules, the regulations, how things are done and the processes. So those air traffic controls 
are very detail oriented. They're systematic. They think they ask a lot of questions. They want to listen first before they speak and make sure that they are backed with some sort of data and information a little bit more than two a minute 30. But there you have it, a complete synopsis of what the flight assessment presents. Bow, bow, bow. So everybody who's watching, let me know what you think he is before we get into it later down the line. But um, to help out with uh, kind of clues of what he is, because like I said, we were going to go all into brand and business. And I was like, wait, we have to let the people know. So I got like one or two more clips of giving you kind of hints towards it. But this is I really wanted to go about this, this clip kind of also talking about how we approach branding and feedback and criticism and everything like that. So this is what he said about negativity. Without the negativity, mm -hmm. I don't think I am who I am today, you know, because it drives you at the same time. It, it, it motivates you um, not to prove them wrong, but to make sure you never fall off um, off the off the, uh, the tree branch where you want to stay, you know, and continue to look down and continue to see, you know, all of them coming and, and everything and adversity coming. So I think it just comes with the territory, Jeff. Moose, what you think? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool, um, you know, as you study LeBron and kind of see the success that he's had on the court and off the court, there's a lot of people who are contributing to his growth and his success. You know, one of the people that you'll find us referencing pretty regularly is Mav Carter, his, his business partner and, and pretty much the person who manages all of his different endeavors and has even been with him throughout his basketball career. Now, it's really dope because you're talking about childhood friends, right? So uh, Maverick was a senior when LeBron came to high school as a freshman. That's how they first sparked their relationship. And of course, a few years down the line, they begin to work together at this level. But, you know, uh, Mav explains that early on in his career there, he was getting opportunities for movies. Like it was just like one after the other, different movies, a lot of different opportunities. And he rejected a lot of those opportunities, not because he didn't want him involved, but he said, we cannot do anything until you solidify yourself as a great on the court. And it was that sacrifice, right? Even up against all of the uh, the criticism, people speaking badly about him because he wasn't really executing in the playoffs right. or getting the Cavs, you know, past some of the different playoff ranks or whatnot. It was that that you look back now today to see LeBron where he is and how he's able to utilize his influence from on the court to a lot of success off the court. It's one of those. It's a decision like that to say. Be great on the court first. Mm -hmm. Establish that first before we move on to anything else. So I think that's definitely come in handy with it to manage and, and navigate the criticism and say it's not about, I like what he said, it's not about proving them wrong and I'll kind of change it up, but it's about proving yourself right. You know, it's like just, just kind of navigating that concept with it. Yeah, and I think with anything that you do, you're going to get some kind of negativity. Now, granted, LeBron had criticism since he was like 15 or something right? right um lights camera action on him from a very early age right and you you're always going to get doubters right but the great thing when it came to lebron is that he stayed focused with what he wanted for himself for his family for his team and that was it right now he like he said it was motivation because when he proves them wrong, it, ha ha, you know, look what you said. Like you kind of mentioned um, with the whole decision, right? He made, we saw, actually we saw earlier, he couldn't bring the chip home, right? So he went to another location. He made the decision. Now, what I love about that is that he controlled the narrative as far as how people found out. Right. So normally when we look at like free agents and stuff like that, we hear it on ESPN. They say whatever right. they want to say. But LeBron did it a little bit different at that time from Cleveland to Miami. Right. But he didn't probably didn't expect the backlash that it got. Mm -hmm. Now, I think any I don't want to say normal, but any average human being. Getting a backlash like that, going to Miami, 
I don't know if they would perform the way that LeBron did and got how many championships over there if they would to really think and be like, man, my hometown crushed me. They, they mm. burned my jerseys, all that great stuff. But he took that and was like, I have to prove them wrong. And so he stayed in Miami for a bit, then came back home, and everybody started loving him again, right? Yeah. And now the, the narrative changed again. Oh, my God, we love you, LeBron. This is great. Thank you. Blah, blah, blah. But any, like I said, any other average human being could have probably taken that negativity and crushed them. That could have been over for the momentum of their whole career. But now, okay, he left again. He's going to the Lakers. People are once again criticizing. Can, can he bring a chip to the Lakers? Yo, the, he only did this for his family. Like everybody has their two cents to say, right? Mm -hmm. it, and it takes... Uh, a really different individual to take negativity and be like, that's my motivation, right? Now, everybody deals with negativity differently. This is how LeBron does. This is how certain, you know, certain types do or whatever. I'm not saying that's how you're supposed to take negativity. Um, but I, I do admire something that's turning into a negative to a positive in his game, in his business, with his family, the energy that he pu puts towards his health, right? Because now they're like, yo, you're 30 some years old. You're, 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 you probably have one more year of your prime. And he's like, yo, I'm, I'm not about that. Like you could say all the stats you want to, I normally do different. Right. So it, it's just, it, it just shows that, there's different ways of handling negativity. The way he has done it within his career has taken him to now talks of one of the greatest players of our time. So yeah. I think that's, you know, take a note of, all right, how do I handle criticism? Well, LeBron did it like this, you know? And, and the reason why we do this show is like, so you can see how other people handle certain things, not for you to copy, but if that fits you the most, Hey, take note and figure out when that comes about. Oh, this person said this about me, man. All right, well, I'm just gonna prove them wrong or cry about it. One of the two. What, whatever you want right. to do, I'm I'm here for it. Whatever. Yeah, and, and and one of the things that I think is is really not talked about enough. You know, like that whole the way he even came about to make the decision or reveal the decision. You know, he got a lot of criticism for like who takes prime time television to tell the world that he's leaving his hometown team. Mm -hmm. But what is not talked about enough is how even from the beginning of his career, he's always been intentional about giving back to community, taking care of, you know, the next generation or the youth and just really like staying true to a, a culture conscious message that is breathing some level of positivity. So there was actually a, 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 like a, a charity and a donation that went into that, that was given to the Boys and Girls Club. So like where they aired from, that wasn't from a, a, a fancy ESPN studio, that was from a Boys and Girls Club that they used that opportunity to also give back to the community. You know, so it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, you, you, you look at, you know, like to your point where criticism, you look at some of the things that went wrong, but man, like there are some things when you really study his moves that his heart has always been in the right place despite of all of the things that went wrong. Facts. Facts. But now let's get into the business side, because this is, this is where I think both of us are looking forward to. Um, I'm going to go first because we're going to talk about Nike, right? So to set it up, um, I think everybody, but let's say you're, you live under a rock, right? LeBron's with Nike. Uh, he has a lifetime deal, and I'm going to let Moose talk about the stats and everything and how much my man has made and everything. But clearly, coming into the league, everybody wanted LeBron, right? He's gotten from Reebok to Adidas, Nike, Puma, all this great stuff, right? So we're going to talk about the beginning stages and how he got to the point of Nike, but... What happens when you're given an offer that most won't refuse? At Rome, at Reebok, and Paul Fireman was very smart. He said to you, 
you know, I know you're going to go see Nike and Adidas, but I'm going to offer you $10 million today if you don't go see them and shake my hand. Right. He offered, he wrote you a $10 million check in that room and you turned it down. I can't say I would have turned it down. I, <laughs> I mean, I think in the room, I said, yo, let's take this check and get the hell out of here. And I, I, for some odd reason, I started thinking, like, if this guy, which is a, he's a great guy too. I Smart still love guy. him to this day. He's Smart an unbelievable guy. guy. But if he's willing to give me a $10 million check right now, what is it to say that Nike or Adidas is not willing to give me 20 or 30, you know, up front, you know, or to say that maybe the upfront money is not even the biggest thing. Mm. Can we just, can we just start with Moose? Ten million dollars in front of you, mm. Mm. so you don't go nowhere. Look, I'm going to offer you the initial offer too. This is not just right. ten million, and that's it. I'm going yeah, to yeah, give yeah. you what I was going to give you, but right now, I'm gonna give you a ten million dollar check. I don't need you to go anywhere else, right? What would go through your head? Not, I'm not giving you what company would say that or whatever, but just what, yeah. what are some of the things that would go through your head instant? Now, I know you don't think on the spot. I know you would instantly be like, yeah, let me get back to you. But, right. you, <laughs> but this one is like, you, you have to pick now. Boom, boom, boom. Does that instantly, actually knowing you, does that instantly go against you and you're like, all right, this is already a bad deal because you clearly don't know me and I need right. time to process. So instantly that's a no. What, like how would, what would go through your head? You know, the, the number is definitely going to at least have you think twice. I'm Ten not going million. out here just be like, it's going to be like, oh yeah, I would say no because they wanted to give me money. It's like, no, I mean, 10 million, like, come on now. You got to at least take a second to think about it. But uh, I, I like what he did because he, he, when you consider who he was at that time mm -hmm. and he's thinking about his lifetime, it's like, oh, okay, I can see why you walked away from the money now because you're thinking about the rest of your career. So I think I, think I would do something similar, right? I would kind of look at, okay, what are my opportunities in terms of the length of my career or what it, in what context is the... The money being delivered, but I'm not just gonna say no to 10 million. I'm gonna at least try and convince myself if mm. I really didn't want to do it. I'm like, you sure you don't want to take this 10 mil, Moose? Right. Like, you sure you don't want to? <laughs> right, right. Uh, that, what but would that... you do? What would you do? Are you taking the 10 mil like on the spot? Listen, it it really depends on what the company like. So if it was Reebok, no, because I'm a Nike person. All right. Right, right, right. right and right. we'll get into that a little bit, but like. Because and he did the same thing. He like he just loved Nike more, right? They mm -hmm. did, and you can say the number, but they did offer him more money than in the beginning, right? Right. So in the beginning, yeah, yeah. they they offered him more money, um, but he was like, "Yo, I just I just love what Nike's doing, and I see a long term with Nike more than Reebok." So I mean, if it was the same kind of company. Because I'm a Nike person, I would probably go with Nike uh, unless there was like a super rollout plan that made sense and there was a way mm. out. I yeah. would think about it because 10 mil. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, cha uh, that changes a couple of things. That changes a couple it, of things. It changes a few things. We, we would be in <laughs> Miami right now. We would be. Right. I'm just saying. But, you know, yeah. um. But I love the the thought that he he instantly thought longevity, yeah, right? He yeah, instantly yeah. thought that he instantly was like, "Yo, if you offer me this now, and I haven't even gone to the other places, let me bet on myself and see what these other people would would offer, right?" And it paid out, but like that could have been a big L. That could right. have been a real, but. That has to do, I still think that has to do with confidence within yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, just because maybe if you did leave that 10 mil on the, on the deck and, and kept it moving, right? And then what did, what did Reebok offer at first? Yeah, so Reebok offered $115 million. 
Now let me let me give you the comparison. Yeah, yeah. let Hold me on. give you the comparison. I said, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah. yeah, give that comparison. So Reebok offers one fifteen. Adidas said, "I'll give you 60. and Nike said, "We'll give you eighty seven million." So he took a twenty eight million dollar pay cut, not to mention the ten million <laughs> that he was willing to give him on the spot. Mm. Right, and, I, and there's no real details on whether that was a part of the 115 or not, but still, right? That that could have been like, hey, I'm just gonna give you the extra 10 million so you don't shop. Right. You don't you, you don't you you stop your shopping spree right here. But you talk about tw- taking the 28 million dollar what appeared to be a loss on that spot for the future. I, but what you know what I loved what he said about that it was like yo. Um, if they offer that, what about the back end? Like, what can happen? And it's, I know a lot of people get blinded by the front end of things, like the, the, the 10 mil and the, what you said, 150, whatever million dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, some people will get real blinded. I Listen, I would, I would think twice. I would, wait, hold on. Hold up. Right? Um where are my lawyers? This is where lawyers come in. But, um, you know, people get blinded, but instantly he thought about, yo, back end stuff. What, what can, what can be created, uh, just because of this deal that we could see, um, that, that isn't so visible for others. Right. So I, I love seeing that. And I love hearing about that. And then clearly he has this life, time which i don't know that's true love for nike by the way to say yeah, yeah. yo you are locked in for life uh with nike and, right and remember that w- that's his second contract right so like his first contract he made he made a good amount so let's say that 87 plus some of the bonuses that he got mm-hmm. but then the second time around they went back and he had you know well established himself as one of the greatest at that point. And then they signed a lifetime contract where, you know, there, there, there's rumors saying that it's about a billion dollars. Mm. It's not like yeah, money. That's, major. that's not that's like major. money. That's, that's major. Not. But you gotta, there's so much you can unpack in that though, because you could talk about the discipline of walking away from the, the that, that extra 28 million as a as a rookie, yeah, you could also just think about like if if money is available in both opportunities, go with the money, even if it's less money, with something that you enjoy or something that you respect and admire. Like it's better for you to work with someone you look up to or collaborate with someone you look up to and admire, maybe take less money because of the joy, the the relationship, what you'll learn right. here, as opposed to just making a decision strictly off of money. So I think to see how it's capitalized. For him and his advantage, it's not even worth doing the math. You just say twenty-eight million more or a billion dollars, right? Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. And 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 like I said, that it has to do with you know, you have to know that there can't be too many matched with what you're doing, and no one could probably get the same kind of deals. And, and have the same amount of influence like you do. So yeah. I, I think knowing, having that self-awareness um, about yourself can really help with saying no to certain situations, right? And in this next clip, I want to bring up like how he deals with endorsements and partnerships and everything like that. Because you, you look at these athletes and majority of their money isn't necessarily coming from their basketball salary. It is coming yeah. from endorsements, but how LeBron's been doing it is a bit different. So let's get into that. I started to look at our endorsement deals as partnerships. I think that's when a lot of it started clicking for me of saying, you know what, we're not just here to hold your product or we're not here just to talk your product. We're here to work with you to how we can figure out how that product may look better on that, on that bookshelf, you know, and how we can live sometimes not with, without even me, Exactly. you know, and 
once we started doing that and I started seeing us become more and more and more seasoned at doing that, I was like, you know, there's no reason why we can't start our own thing. Yep. To a point where we can have our brainstorming opportunities where if we come up with something, people want to buy what we got. Move. I love that. I love that. That's so dope. That's so dope. You talk about taking accountability and ownership of certain responsibilities before they're even handed to you, to you right? That's what that happens, right? And, and you'll hear me say this time and time again. You know, if you meet somebody's expectations but fall short of your potential, you got the short end of the stick. Like, that, that's not a good deal for you. You've got to renegotiate. So I think when they started to really look behind the first layer and say, you're, yes, you're making more from us, but we're contributing a lot more than just communicating a message or letting you use our face or our influence. There's actually thing, tangible concepts that we're helping you make your ideas better, whether it be through storytelling, mm -hmm. through branding, through marketing with you know different audiences that better can connect or relate with what we're saying and how we're saying it, because what you're giving us, like the script you're giving us, just isn't connecting. So I think they started to say, well, if we're contributing more than just showing up or using the influence, how can we get compensated for that? And there are multiple examples of how it's really, you know, turned up for their advantage. But before we get into the numbers, I definitely want your opinion on it, you know, especially because as we looked behind it today, it wasn't just business savviness. It was strictly branding moves, especially from that realization forum. Mm -hmm. So how do you interpret that? you know, that kind of aha moment for them and what they've done with it since. I, I think looking at that one, it's like they understood the power that they had, right? Um, there's not no regular athlete where, you know, here we throw something on you and that's it. Um, like you said, they were putting so much more into it, but I think at an early age, he understood the influence and the power that he had. Right. Um, how it didn't matter what jersey, sneaker, headband, whatever it was, uh, headphones, um, which I know you'll get into. It didn't matter what he had. People wanted it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's that's leverage for anybody who has that amount of influence. And so if you catch on to that and you know that power you're able to negotiate and be like, yo, you know what? I don't need a straight up check. I need some kind of equity. I need some kind of skin in the game to make this make sense, right? And I love what um, he did with Beats. I was going to say Day, but it is Day. But I love what he did with um, Beats. I love what he did with um, Blazing Pizza because for the simple fact that he was like, I honestly like the pizza like who doesn't like pizza i like the pizza same thing with beats i like you know i love the headphones he doesn't re really get into anything that he doesn't like doing right um and they all paid off to an incredible amount of money and i think that's something to really look into as far as if you can tell the things that you love and the power that you have based off just doing what you love, I think you need to hold on to that power and leverage it to when it comes to these different uh, brands that come to you. And you're like, okay, do I take this check? Do I take this free merchandise, everything like that? Or do I try to get some skin in the game and not just an affiliate kind of vibe? Do I really get maybe 10% overall? 20% overall, whatever it is, points upon the, the, the brand. I think that plays a big role. And that's when you go from just a regular, maybe influencer to now a business. I think that's what makes the biggest difference about LeBron is understanding his value, his power, his influence very early to make certain deals that no one in the NBA really truly saw until he did it. He had uh, teammates that were jealous of how he did beats, right? And so, but he taught people to do different deals. 
Now, there are different um, endorsement deals that we've seen based off maybe what a LeBron has done. It's using the LeBron uh, blueprint. So understanding that power, I think, is huge and critical for anybody that's building up anything. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the lessons that I was also thinking about just for, you know, different uh, entrepreneurs, creatives, or just people building brands and businesses in this current time, one of the things you can take away from that is you have to be really good at evaluating your own value as well. Because mm -hmm. I think one of the things we fall short in doing is when we are just trying to satisfy the client that we don't realize that we're giving more than what we agreed upon. And some of these extra things are additional services that require or change the terms of the originally agreed contract. Mm -hmm. So I understand the nature to serve and help, and I'm always good for that. But you have to be able to evaluate your skill set depending on where you are with the deliverables, uh, with your demand in the marketplace, and how much more you have in your pipeline to start to say, wait a minute, the fact that I'm going to give you more of my time, it takes away from what I can do over here, mm -hmm. right? Like now I have less time to tend to new clients, to maybe attract new clients because I'm giving you more of my time and I'm not getting that return, at least on my time. Let's just say not even the investment, but the return on the time. So I think they were also smart enough to notice that, again, if I'm giving you additional services other than what was originally agreed to, then what type of compensation structure makes sense? Now, of course, for them, they did a great job of negotiating and, and utilizing that, mm -hmm. but definitely that was that was what sparked it. And then from there, they took, and, and I love what, again, what Mav Carter said about this, you know, they they he jokes around and he often says, I didn't get a college degree, but I graduated from Nike. And he talks about his experience working as an intern at Nike, running and grabbing coffee for people. But he, what he says, he realizes that Nike isn't any better at making shoes. Mm -hmm. They are the best when it comes to telling stories. Mm. And once he realized that part, he was like, oh, I can do that. Like we we grew up telling these stories. So if, if that's the element, it's about presenting these stories and tying that concept with the shoe. That's what made Nike what it is today and continues to make it what it is. So I think him, he, he talks so importantly or talks so big of that opportunity because it exposed to him that kind of innate secret. Mm -hmm. And it's not as big as we think it is. And I think that's a, a, another piece to, to really uh, hit on that. We often make it more difficult than what it actually is. Yeah. Right? Like he could have been like, man, I think it's storytelling. And then, no, nah, it can't just be stories. Like they have these resources and the manufacturers and this and this and this mm -hmm. and focused on all of that and missed out on the opportunity to become, you know, the, the, the media company that they have, the entertainment company they have and do what they do best with helping people to better brand, mm -hmm. get access to high profile people that give them the reach or extend the reach of their products and their services more than they could have ever done before. So I think in, in watching this clip and really evaluating what are some of the things we can do better, it's saying stop making it difficult, more difficult than what it is. Sometimes it could be something that simple, something as simple as storytelling to say, man, I think that's the piece that's gonna make it click and right. trust your intuition and run with it. You know, so yeah, I just wanted to add that piece in there. I think that was uh, that was really cool and, and kind of seeing him give credit to uh, uh, his college degree from interning at Nike. Mm -hmm. And of course, seeing something as simple as storytelling and saying, hey, this is what we're going to kind of put our energy behind it and, and push forward. So actually, you, you said something that that actually I want to bring up a conversation, uh, which is the interning, right? The the serving part to then bigger opportunities, right? So if, if he interned at, at Nike and normal people may think of that, like, okay, then you're starting your own shoe business, whatever it is, but he grabbed a, uh, a trait of Nike. They grabbed the, the main part of it and then created the media company, right? What are your thoughts about those people who are trying to figure things out, right? figure things out um they have some kind of gift or they know a direction like they're in a field and they know some kind of direction but they feel that there's always a bigger thing to happen right what do you tell those people like 
how do they serve? Like, what is the first kind of things to do? Do they go straight to getting a check and think? Because, I mean, there was no need necessarily to intern for Nike. Yeah. You got LeBron. Right. Like, he's right. good, right? The, 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 everybody in his crew is good at this point, right? Um, what do you think? Because 50 did it, too, when we were going over 50. 50, um, yeah interned at the record label and found the in and out so he can uh establish his own career on his own right so what what do you see what is the biggest lesson from that part of of interning when you didn't necessarily need to yeah so when you think of your own creative idea your own whether it be gift or something that you want to do you got to look at that as the flavor on top and that can change. That can be presented differently, depend on who you are, what you want people to take away from it. But at every strong business, there are fundamental pillars that no matter who you are, what you do, what you want to do, those pillars are always going to exist. Now, we can say, oh, storytelling, sure, that's what Nike does. But again, to the average person at that time who doesn't see that or isn't growing up with that type of experience, they may overlook that it's the, the element of storytelling is that's the secret sauce that we can use. So I think sometimes putting your pride aside and not uh, getting so frustrated or just automatically saying, well, no, it doesn't match up. I don't want to do it because it's not exactly like me. It can stop your blessing from figuring out what are those fundamental pillars, mm -hmm. right? Every every great business has something about them that allows them to attract some of the best talent in the marketplace, right? Like Nike isn't just made up of Phil Knight. There are, I would I would argue, maybe thousands of phenomenal designers who contribute to all of the shoes that come out that consistently make them, you know, the company that they are. So there are certain, but but. You may get caught up in the designers or say, oh, well, that market's saturated, but you may overlook the concept of, well, what are they doing to attract that talent? Like, is there something specific? You know, so so I think when you intern or when you allow yourself to serve, you get an opportunity to look at something, even if it's not exactly the lane or industry you want to be in the future, you might pick up on one of those fundamental pillars that can, that you can then take with you in building your own business or collaborating with someone else to add an element to your business that you may have not had because your gifting wasn't in that area. But it's like, hey, but I learned this from so-and-so. Let's just add that to the mix. I love it. I love it. I, I just wanted to point that out because I think people would hear that intern part and probably like brush over it. But I think that to, to serve when you don't necessarily need to, right? Mm. To serve for the information that, you know is you can only get based off experience based off getting inside the system and truly truly seeing the system like we could look at youtube we could read books all that great stuff but there's is nothing like getting your, your your hands dirty into what you're trying to really do it's experience over anything is the biggest part of this right and, and he went to to intern and I think that was huge because that's a that's a team player, right? I think that helped LeBron out, that helped the whole team out because now you have this whole media company that is pretty much taking over, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, but what I love that you said was that you you kind of have to put your pride aside, like mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing. Um, I know a lot of people, sometimes including myself, I could admit that my pride takes over me. I'm cool with that. I understand. Right. But um, it's huge to put that pride aside. And, and let me transition because I see the time. Uh, let's transition to the last clip where he understood that there's more than just playing basketball. There's mm -hmm. more. And he's not going to know everything and so this was his approach about not knowing everything it's like you know we always talk about the process you know in the process of me trying to become the greatest of all time or maximize you know my potential as a player i also have to be able once i leave battle or leave competition to have to accept the fact that there's certain things that i'm maybe don't know 
or don't know enough of, so I have to ask questions. You know, it's, it's a challenging thing, but at the same time, I know that once I get off the floor, there's gonna be more time in my life spent off the floor than on the floor. So, right, um, I think that's huge, first off. Um, one, admitting that you're not gonna know everything is huge. Uh, two, to totally realize that it, at an early start that, yo, I'm not going to be here forever. Like, I'm just not. So I really have to set certain things up, and this is going to take me into a lane that I've never been in. So I have to humble myself and ask the right questions and not be afraid to ask questions and not think that, Oh, well, I may sound stupid or you're just, you know, an athlete, this, that, and the third. Um, because he asked questions, he's gotten partnerships with Beats. Because he asked questions, he has an amazing franchise with Blazing Pizza. Because he asked questions, uh, his whole family is set up. Because he asked questions, like, he's probably going to own a team one day. Like, it's, oh. it's, it, I think that says a lot to not being so prideful and just ask the questions that literally can get you to the next level. I know for me, I struggle asking questions. I will spend hours trying to find something to try to find the answer before I go and ask somebody. I'm working on that. I'm super working only on Only child that. syndrome though. That, Is that, that? I feel like, yeah, it's gotta be an only child thing for real. I don't know what it is, but I know I struggle with that. Um, and but when we're researching all these greats, like they're the first one to admit, like, I am not afraid to ask a question. I'm not. I'm not afraid to act as if I am not. I don't like I, I just don't know it all. And I'm not trying to act like I know it all. I'm going to come and absorb all the information. And you know who, who reminds me of that? Like, instantly the person that reminds me is Inky. Mm -hmm. Like, Inky will ask the uh, janitor questions. Like, it doesn't right. even yeah. matter um, who or what it is. He's going to ask questions, right? So you really have to look at just your surroundings and are you asking questions maybe even on a daily basis you know um whether it's within your lane or or a new hobby that you want or you know maybe a new book you want to read you're not really sure which one to pick and stuff like there's no stupid question that's hard for me to say because i really feel like there could be stupid questions in life <laughs> i really do um so i'm working on it i'm god's working on me still but um there's no stupid questions I'm going to say within business. Maybe. Yeah, Still working yeah, on it. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like that. What I do like you that. think, she, Moose? She, she gave a little fine print at the end, like, yeah. look, within specific yeah, yeah, parameters, yeah, yeah. I can't, you got to read the fine print. Yeah, I can't sit here and say just in the world there's no stupid right, questions. Right, right. I, but, well, what is the definition of stupid? Like, I think everybody has their own definition of what we deem as stupid normal all that great stuff maybe that's a whole nother conversation i've yeah. i've alluded to it like just maybe because we don't agree with something doesn't necessarily make it wrong i i think this whole world is influenced by somebody so hence why we know things that that's a whole nother conversation go moose because i promise you I see what you're doing I, I, I see what you're doing we get deep <laughs> We get deep. Yeah, no, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. No, I think, uh, again, man, I just go back to it, it's so cool to recognize that the, the people are where they are, and it's not because they have access to any principles that you don't have access to, right? They still practice the same fundamental concepts that we have access to but they probably just take them a little bit more serious. And I think that was one of my biggest surprises and why I'm grateful to do this show with you. It's because it allows me to kind of really get the reassurance even furthermore, like the people follow, regardless of how, what their net worth is or where they are, or what platform or what stage or wh how much success, they still 
follow the same fundamental principle principles, but probably take them a little bit more seriously. So we all know, like, and, and here's how you can spin it and check people and people in the comments, you know, take quick inventory right now, right? We all know that we're not going to be able to work for our entire lives. How many of us have retirements in place? How many of us are starting to seriously take that conversation of, man, how do I set myself up or my business up? Maybe with the right insurance, with the right, right, like investment strategies. Like, what are you doing as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a personal brand, as a creative to start thinking about that next step? So uh, what I'm seeing here is that, man, this is someone who, again, is, is practicing some of the more fundamental principles, but at a very high level, because entering his career, he knew that I have to start thinking about life after basketball because I'm going to do life away from the court much more than I will with being LeBron James on the court. And hence, that's when he started, you know, coming across some of these different strategies. And it's like, it's really, it's really cool to see it unfold. You know, one of the examples I even wanted to give is like, uh, how, how they partnered with Beats, you know, and, and same same concept. You know, we talked about Blaze Pizza, but Beats was the same thing. They went to him, his love for hip hop and, and culture was like, yeah, let's let's do it. But he wanted some sort of access, thinking about the future. Mm -hmm. So sure, he, he, he jumps on uh, with them to do some of the, the ads, but he's also uh, considered a, a, a percentage owner with, with, the, with the company. And something as, di as simple as this, during the Olympics, he gifted all the players on the team a pair of beats. So if you notice, basketball players specifically use their time walking in and out of arenas as an opportunity to showcase their style. Maybe some some leveraging maybe brand opportunities or exposure like, hey, I'm, I'm probably somebody you want to consider. So of course, with people taking pictures of them, as they navigate in and out of every arena, every hotel, as they're going through the Olympics, uh, people are starting to see beats on the entire Team USA. Mm -hmm. And what does that do? Of course, it boosts the sales of beats, ends up making one of the top leaders in the industry. Later, they get acquired by Apple. LeBron James gets about a $50 million uh, uh, you know, upgrade to his, to his financial security because of it right so it's just it's just kind of cool to see like even some of the just the easiest things if done with some of those fundamental principles in place over the long haul can really put you up in a really good place so that was fire most that was fire i just want to put that out there that was fire thanks nick <laughs> <laughs> so um try and stay on time we are going to go over what we think LeBron James is when it comes to the flight assessment. If you haven't taken the flight assessment, right? If you have not, go to flightassessment.com. It is the best tool for self-awareness. Best Huge. tool. Um, and how we've been spinning it, it could help your brand and business as well. Like, mm -hmm. it's not just to know you, it's to know how you're acting towards everything you're doing in life, right? And some some of us are moving without that knowing how anything we do, like just no direction, to be honest with you. So if you haven't taken the flight assessment, flightassessment.com, but let's figure out what LeBron James is. Um, so start, start voting, start voting what you think. Um, I'm gonna go first. I'm gonna go first. Okay. Um, this is gonna be hard. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go first though. So I'm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Are you struggling with this one? I am. I really am. So I'm going to say not a pilot. Mm. Wow. I'm not going to say that. Mm, that hurt my feelings, though. Really? Yeah. Um, mm. And so, mm, yeah, I don't know for the simple <laughs> fact. Okay. So <laughs> let me tell you why I'm struggling with this. Okay. 
So clearly, leader in all teams gets to pick right. who he wants, all that great stuff. However, he is huge on team. He is huge, yeah. and he has been, like, he uh, turned down, like, one of the, like, the McDonald's um, challenger, the championship thing when he was younger because his friends couldn't go because they weren't as skilled as him. And so yeah. he had to turn that down. Um, when at early the, his, his mentors like digged in him, like you, there's nothing without team. Yeah, you're doing great, but everybody's going to get acknowledged for how good you did. Right. So he's super huge on team, super huge on clearly community. I, on the court, I could see some some yeah. pilot vibes, but I think overall, I wouldn't say pilot. What do you say? Fair enough. I could, yeah, I, I could see that. Um, I I would have left it on. At least that would have not been my first choice. Cool. But, well, I'm uh, struggling with. Yeah, no, I saw, I saw. I'm I saw struggling. You. You, you even almost pulled it back and looked like you were like, wait, wait, let's... Yeah, you may have to go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, most... All right. So I'm going to say he is not a grounds crew. What? Yep, 100%. 100%. You made some good arguments, but... uh. Yeah, so when I look at... I don't even want to take it uh, away because I want to argue about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, when you look at how... So, uh, of course, rest in peace to Kobe, but you look at some of the videos, mm -hmm. and I, I look at some, some big-time moments, like even in front of large audiences, mm -hmm. that let me know LeBron is not a grounds crew. Okay. I look at the dance-off he had with Shaq at the All-Star game. Okay. Right. In front of in front of like big audiences, him just being the funny guy, uh, just having a good old time and making jokes. Mm -hmm. And then I also look at the time when during the Olympics, when, you know, he is making fun of Kobe Bryant in terms of how he put the jersey in his uh, in his shorts. Yes. They sang happy birthday to him. So, like, you can see him in a lot of different incidents, kind of being like that young at heart class clown, always wanting to have a good time. And I also think he's used his influence very, 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 very well. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been too out in the limelight and done very well with it that I'm like, yeah, no, nah, I, I see the loyalty, the relationships, but it's more coming from a flight attendant standpoint as opposed to a grounds crew. I could maybe see that. I could maybe yeah. see that. I, I could yeah. see that. Um, now that you put it that way, maybe. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hey LeBron, reach out to us, man. We'll give you a we'll gift you Absolutely. a flight assessment. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Just just hit us up. LeBron, don't <laughs> don't look. It's it'll be for free. We don't want nothing. We just want to see if we're right or wrong. That's yeah, seriously. it. Seriously. And if you we don't want us do to let us with you. right, and we don't if you yeah. if you don't want us to let people know, well, this is this is just for us, right? This uh, is just for us. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, so oh, man, because. I almost wanted to say like flight attendant grounds crew just because, yeah. well, so I did, but then thinking about it, right? So air traffic control can be a little bit what I'm thinking about just because not the first one. I, I think flight attendant is the first one, right? Yeah. Of how yeah. taco Tuesday and, <laughs> how his influ how he uses his influence with hip hop and everything like that. I think um super flight attendant, especially with the community vibes. Everything he does is about giving back. And I think that does have to do with being about people. Um, whether it's from his hometown, even he said in California he's gonna do a lot of things of giving back. So I think yeah. that's just about people. So I'm cool with that, but how he takes care of his body, like very strategic with what he spends like a million or two yeah. million off, yeah. off just for the recovery. He even looks like, okay, when we're getting to playoffs, I'm not eating sugar. 
right? But I'm bringing up my car. He's very aware of his health. I think that plays a role uh, of that ATC for me. There's other things probably, but what stood out for me when it came to that part was how uh, systematic he is with his health, with the recovery, because he knows if I'm up in years, the the way I'm going to stay the greatest is how quick I can recover after each uh, game. So mm-hmm. I think that's something that you, you can't really like brush over. Yeah. But I will yeah. say flight attendant is number sure. one, but that's just me. Yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah, hey. I, I definitely say flight attendant too. Yeah. But did you agree with flight attendant air traffic control or did you go with air, uh, flight attendant and pilot? No, I can see the air traffic control in there. Okay. Yeah, I can see the air traffic control. And I think also seeing the role that Mav plays for him mm-hmm. is like he doesn't he doesn't have to be the pilot for the team. It's like he has somebody really manning that down. Uh, but, but what about the clutch? The um, what's his name? Ricky? Is it Ricky? Uh, Which one? I think it's uh, what, Rob it? or Ron. Uh, the one who's the sports agent. Rich. Rich, Rich Paul. Rich. Rich Paul. Oh, I should know this. Yeah. Um, Rich Paul, do you think because he's strategic with maybe the contracts, the deals, all that great stuff? Because now he is the sports agent of like a whole bunch of NBA players. Yeah, yeah. No, he has a big portfolio mm-hmm. uh, under his belt. But Rich also gives me some of like the, the the flashy Kevin Hart type vibes, you know, like also mimicking some flight attendant okay. tendencies. But yeah, that that's what I see. But I think um, I think Mav is definitely like the business mind behind it. Mm-hmm. And and uh, he he's like calling a lot of the shots. But I think they're, they're giving him control. It's like it's, it's working. So they're doing a good job. The other dude, uh, I think his I just saw on one of his posts today. Uh, they call him Mims or Randy. Yeah, he he's like, of course, another childhood friend of LeBron's. But he just goes with him everywhere to make sure his LeBron has everything he needs. Like. Right. Whatever, whatever, whatever team, yeah, whatever team LeBron plays on, he's like the player uh, development guy. Like he becomes automatically the the person with that team that has to take care. So yeah, they got like they got him everywhere with LeBron to make sure he's good. But what's crazy, right? And and let me, everybody who who voted for flight attendant and air traffic controller, congratulations. But right. um, what? One of the things that when I was going over this and always hearing about their, you know, his three friends, it makes me like, yo, I got to get I got to get my circle super, super tight like that. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, I, I almost called you on some. OK, who's our third person? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> who, are we, who, are we, who are we getting? Like, who are we recruiting? Yeah. Like, who do we got to groom? Whatever. What do we got to right. do? Um, just because you see. Um, even with Jay, you know, there's a tight circle, right? And I don't think that that should go unnoticed. I think, um, f- at least for me, hip hop wise, you're always known for having a big posse and everything. It's like, it's like either big posse or like one person, right? right. Um, but it's, it's cool to see the different greats have just like, three or four people that they really, really, really go to, right? They really like, okay, for next level business situations, contract, whatever it is, it's not happening. We're not moving unless these other two are here or these people are in the, in the building, one of the two. I think that's something that we can't really uh, breeze by when it comes to LeBron either, because you you see LeBron, you see pretty much the other three, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And Moose, I definitely wanted because I know you break down teams so perfectly. Um, I wanted your take before we leave um, about those three, just like a brief kind of understanding what you got out of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they definitely to to your fourth, first point about. Uh, 
uh, having like that small team, mm -hmm. I definitely think it helps to know that a lot of the surface level stuff that usually rips people apart, which is differences over money, who gets what, yep. right? Who's getting more attention and letting ego. I, I, honestly, with big teams, like high level teams and even just business teams, that's usually some of the first things, the first things to deteriorate the chemistry that people have with one another, right? It's letting those superficial things destroy what you guys have built and worked so hard to develop. Mm -hmm. So I think when you, when you're able to find that mold and more importantly with your friends, number one, it, it almost violates and it goes totally against the grain of what everyone says, never do business with your friends. Here they go being very successful right? Working with their childhood best friends. And you see other examples of that. Like we talked about, Jay is one of them. Kevin Hart is another. Yeah. Jay Cole even has his manager who they met in college. So it's like, it does give you hope that with the right tools and shameless plug with to the flight assessment here on the, hey. this one, but with the right tools, you can make it work. And I think what they've done here, it's that you literally see every single one of them is in a unique role. I'll give you an example. They said when they first started, Mav was trying to be the sports agent. He let out being, I'm going to be the Asian, but he, he failed miserably. And he talks about his frustration with that because instantly, because he was so close to LeBron or tied to LeBron, other players saw him and said, yo, that's LeBron's guy. Right. So the, the association was if you're LeBron's guy, there's no way you could be my guy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, like you already got like, yeah, the no, best. you're already with him. Right. right. There's no way you're going to do anything else for me. So he said he w he took time away from what he could have been building with LeBron. And why try to do more when there's only one LeBron? Mm -hmm. So like for some of those people who are working as what you would call the two men. And I think it's I, I understand why they call it that, although it's not the, the preferred name. Right. But if you're in a position where you're managing the talent or you're running kind of more of the business moves, mm -hmm. you honestly deserve just as much credit because of the responsibility and, and, and the brilliance you got to have to help navigate some of those decisions. But it lets you know, like if you have a, 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 a plus with you, don't try and duplicate it with, el with anybody else. But then they let Rich Paul and we talked about him. We let they let him lead out. And he kind of went on his own and created that same opportunity. But it worked because he wasn't as known when it came to LeBron. So he was able to win people over from that side. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. All right, people. I just wanted to get his take on that. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everybody who watched this LeBron episode uh, Thursday. There's a, no Friday, man. Oh, Friday, Friday, yeah. Friday. AP, I gotta get used to this new date. Okay, Friday, eight p.m. Eastern, seven p.m. Central, five p.m. West Coast time. We got a very special guest. Uh, Jeremy Anderson is going to be in the building, right? Hey, special hey. way, special way. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, Moose, how'd you feel yes. about today? Uh, I was really good. I like this. I like this. I I um I think it's a lot more targeted, and I'm hoping I I never have the live stream up, so I can't see what the people are saying. But I'm hoping that uh, folks in the community ha have gotten more direct feedback or just kind of like more simple nuggets to be like, ooh, that hurt, but I can I can see how this can work, or yeah, you know, just many lessons from there as opposed to giving you guys a, a autobiography of stuff that you can probably Google. So let's get it. <laughs>